Grant Cardone here, New York Times bestselling author. I want to talk to you about unemployment. I'm going to show you how to get a job. These 12 tips will guarantee you a job and they'll guarantee you the job you want and literally get you the job you want in 36 hours. Number one, this is what I want you to do. I want you to abhor, literally stay away from any idea that you're going to accept unemployment. Unemployment is a killer. Don't do it. Do not be tempted by this easy thing called unemployment. Yes, you paid into it. Yes, you deserve it. No, you don't want it. Trust me, okay? You don't want it. The government offers crumbs. What are you going to do? You're going to have to go back into the marketplace sooner or later and say what? Hey, I want a job. I need a job. I got to get to work. Work is important. And the guy's going to look at you and say, what happened the last 33 weeks? Well, it's a bad job market. He's think you, he thinks you're contaminated. Don't kid yourself. It's not fair. It's not right. It shouldn't happen to anyone. He's going to look at you. And if somebody was working three weeks ago and you hadn't worked in 33 weeks, I promise you he's taking the other guy. So what I want you to do is I want you to say no to unemployment. Say no, I do not want it. I will not take it. My job is to get a job and go into that marketplace. Refuse the easy route. Go the hard route. I'm going to show you in the other 11 steps how to get the job and decide you're going to get a job. If you don't make that decision, if you're tempted by the unemployment, the other 11 strategies won't work. Your second tip to acquiring a job in 36 hours is to do this. Decide you're going to get a job. You understand what I'm saying? Look, you are going to get a job. I don't care what the job market's like because you're not out of work. What do I mean? You're unemployed. What's your new job? Nobody goes without a job. Your new job is to get a job. I want you now to put more energy, more effort, okay, more tenacity, more persistence, and more creativity into this new job, getting a new job, than you gave to your last job. If you worked eight hours a day at your last job, I want you to work 10 hours a day at your new job. What's your new job? Your new job is to get a job. Look, if you're going to work for the man, okay, and now you can't work for the man because he let you go because his firm failed or he got too small or your in industry collapsed, and it wasn't your fault. It had nothing to do with you maybe, right? Or maybe it was. It doesn't matter anymore. Your new job is that you work for you. Your new job is to go into the marketplace and get a job. So if you used to go to work at 8 o'clock in the morning, Look, I need you to get up at 6. I need you to be at work at 7. If you used to stay till 5 for the man, then why don't you stay till 6 or 7 for you? Get a job. You get it? Get a job is your new job. You're not out of work. I, I remember a man telling me this. I was out of work. I'd been like two months without work. And he's like, dude, you ain't out of work. Your new job is to get a job. And I was like, what was I thinking? I literally went unconscious for 60 days. Your new job is to get a job. I want you to put more energy, more effort, more tenacity, more follow through and more creativity and even invest more money today into your new job than you did in your old job. The third tip to getting a job and getting a job in 36 hours and getting the job you want in 36 hours is to be willing to take a job even if it's beneath you. And you're like, well, wait a minute, Grant. You just told me I, you were going to get me the job that I wanted and the pay I wanted. Yeah, I will. But here's the deal. You have to say yes to a job. If somebody offers you a job and you're like, ah, it's a little beneath me. I don't want to do that. Dude, who are you? You're out of work right now. No, you're not out of work. You're working for yourself and you need work. You need to take a job. You need to get a win. It's like being at a blackjack table, okay, or a roulette wheel. You lose. You lose a second hand. You lose a third hand. You lose a fourth hand. You can't lose any more hands right now. Get a job. Staying connected to the workforce, to the employment force, to the people that are out contributing, giving, working, you know, integrated with community every day is valuable. Forget how much they're paying you for a second. Stay connected to the workforce. You're out of work on Wednesday, you're back to work on Thursday, even if you have to take something a little beneath you. Don't let your ego get in your way. I have taken jobs beneath me before. I have taken less pay than I deserve before many times. I have worked for nothing before. And it's connected me to people that ended up giving me new opportunities. Look, you're in the people business. Economies are made of people. Businesses are made of people. Stay connected. 
I have a brother-in-law that got disconnected from the workforce. First it was a month. Then it was three months. The next thing you know, it's a year. Then it's two years. Then it's three years. He can't return anymore. His health started to go down. His morale started to go down. He should have taken a job beneath him years before. Look, this was over 20 years ago. He's still not working a day. How do you think he feels about himself? I want you to take a job. I want you to get a job. I'm going to show you how to position yourself where you can get that great paying job, the job you wanted to turn this lost employment into an opportunity. But look, if you get a shot on Thursday to take a job that you think is beneath you, dude, I want you to hook it up, take it, and then keep searching. The fourth tip to getting a job is something you need to avoid doing, not doing, okay? And that's this. Disregard all the negative talk and all the negative people that say no one is hiring. There's millions, millions of businesses in America, millions of small businesses, and trust me, they're all looking for one thing, great people. So if you're going to be exceptional, extraordinary, unique, you don't have a problem. If you're going to be a naysayer, no one's hiring. You don't have a shot. You got to believe you can make this. You got to, you have to believe people are hiring. And then you need to go to those places where people value exceptional, where people value extraordinary. Even if you've had negative experiences in the past, maybe you were taken advantage of at your last job. Maybe they didn't value you at your last job. Maybe, maybe you didn't invest enough energy and effort and creativity in making yourself stand out and extraordinary, and that's why you're out of work today. For 25 years, I've worked for myself. I wake up unemployed every single day for 25 years, and I got jobs, but I got to go get new work all the time. Same thing for you. Disregard all the negative naysayers, can't get it. You got to be positive. You got to find the rainbow. You got to find the shining light at the end of the tunnel. You got to find that one, that one company that will value you. The fifth step to you getting the job you want is do not, do not rely on a resume. They're just words on a piece of paper. People don't hire resumes. Nobody hires this. They hire people. What happens to you when you go in with a resume, okay, with the HR department or the executive, they're looking at your resume. What are they not looking at? They're not looking at you. Look, I want to literally take the resume away from the guy. I want to take it. Sir, give me that a second. I want to tell you who I am. See, I want him paying attention to me because he's going to hire me. He can't hire this. You buy a paper. You don't hire paper. I want him to hire me. I want him to see me for who I am. This does not have value. Okay, you speak three languages? Show him that you speak three languages. Let me tell you who I am. Let me tell you what I've done. Let me tell you who I've worked for. And let me tell you, most importantly, why I'm exceptional. Why you might look at 83 people for this position, and I'm the only one. The only one that you should hire. And by the way, let me tell you this. If you don't hire me, I promise you, you and the company will regret it. And let me tell you why. And start ripping off number one, number two, number three, number four, number five. You need this pitch down. You need this presentation down. And a piece of paper, a resume, can't pitch you. How can two or three pieces of paper be more valuable than you as a human being in your presentation? You need to have this thing nailed. Like you're delivering Shakespeare or some great play or you're selling your, your, your finest piece of work right now. Because when you're getting a job, that's what you're doing. Resumes don't get positions. You know what happens to most resumes? They sit on a desk with a bunch of other resumes and they're all equal. You're not a resume. You're an extraordinary human being. I want you to get in front of that person that's going to make the decision to hire and I want you to sell yourself. Tip six for getting a job. I want you to avoid depending on headhunters and monster.com and Craigslist for getting you this job or even for a referral getting you the job. Now, don't misunderstand me. I'm not suggesting you wouldn't use a headhunter or a connecting service. I'm not suggesting that at all. What I'm suggesting is don't rely on them. Understand this. The headhunters pitching lots of people, lots. What do you want? You want a blonde, a redhead? You want a brunette? You want a white guy? You want a black guy? What, what do you want? You want an engineer? You want a mechanic? You want a chemist? What, what do you want? You see, they're pitching lots of people. Who are you pitching? You're pitching you. 
Don't rely on them. Look, I got an agent. I got a literary agent. I got a marketing agent. I got a guy doing my PR. I don't rely on any of them. I still have them. I still use them. They still make connections with me. I have friends. I have relatives. I have business acquaintances. I use them all, but I don't depend on them. Because once you break your reliance and dependence on another person to take care of you, you'll stand up and take care of yourself. I promise you it works for everybody. So I'm not saying no to headhunters. I'm not saying no to searches. I'm not saying no to monster.com, okay? Understand that. I'm not saying no to getting friends, relatives, and neighbors, and referrals, and business acquaintances are the last company to make a phone call for you. But don't rely on them. Depend on yourself. You know, stand tall, be strong, go out into the marketplace, put these other tips together, and decide, dude, I'm, I'm the guy they're hiring, not the headhunter, it's me. Rely on yourself you'll make it go right. Tip number seven of 12 is do not rely on the HR department. Human resources is a screener. It is a problem for you. Do not rely on it. Now look, this is completely, I'll tell you right now, completely politically incorrect what I'm about to tell you, but I guarantee it's one of the most important of the 12 steps I'm sharing with you. Do not rely on the hiring person, the HR department, the manager, the assistant, whoever. These are filters and screens. You want to get in front of one person in that organization, one person, the owner, the executive, the top guy or gal, the person that makes decisions for everything. The person in that organization that literally said this morning, no more hiring, and can meet somebody at lunch and say, hire him right now. See, HR can't do that. Anybody below that executive level cannot make that kind of decision. You want to go to the very top, get in front of a decision maker. Don't rely on that resume. Have yourself do that presentation to the guy that's most affected by great people. So I'm assuming you're a great person. I'm assuming you want a job. I'm assuming you have something to bring to the party. Then I want you to bring that story, that exact story, to the top person in the organization, not a manager, not the VP. I want you to bring it right to the president of the United States. That's the point I'm making here, okay? Go to straight to the top. Bypass HR. How are you going to do that? Find out somebody that knows the guy at the top. Somebody knows somebody at the top. Somebody knows Grant Cardone, find out who it is, pay him if you have to, do whatever it takes. Find out where he's at, when he arrives in the parking lot, when he gets to work, where he's going to be tonight, what time he leaves, where he goes to lunch. You get in front of that guy. You want a job? You want a great job? You want the job you want? Get in front of the decision makers, not the HR department. Tip number eight, do not rely on social media to get you a job, okay? Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Google+, they can't get you a job. So when somebody posts on Facebook that they're looking for someone, don't post back in comments, Oh, dirka, dirka, dirka. Tell me more about the job. I just had this recently. We were just looking for someone. I literally had all these people respond, and then half of them, half of them are saying, Give me more information. Tell me more about it. Dude, don't be ridiculous. What are you doing? Get your body in front of that person, not start tagging back and forth electronically. Just like I won't hire a resume, I'm not going to hire a comment on Facebook, Twitter, or LinkedIn. Look, you're being lazy. Wake up. You can't take shortcuts here. Your job is to get a job. You're in charge of this new company, the Get a Job for Myself company that you've just started. What are you going to do? Respond on Facebook? Are you looking for a job? You're going to get up early, right? You're going to stay late? You're going to invest more energy, more effort, more creativity? Hey, you don't do lazy things like, give me more information on Facebook. I'm the guy. Can I get an appointment? When can I see someone? Dude, the guy's on Facebook, Grant Cardone. Hit more information about him. Get in front of Grant Cardone. Then you'll get a job. Put all 12 tips together, and I guarantee you won't just have the job. You won't just have the job you want, but you're going to have confidence. You're going to believe in yourself, and you're going to get a great paying job. In fact, you might look at this and say, best opportunity I had in my whole life was losing the last job I had, because now i got my game on. Tip nine, I want to talk about the interview now. You're in the interview. You're in front of the right person. You're in front of a decision maker. You're not relying on your resume anymore. What I want you to do is this. I want you to talk about what you're going to do for these people, this company, this individual, 
not what you've done in the past. I want you to put all your attention on what you can do for this guy. I want you literally to paint a picture about how effective, how great you're going to be, what you can do for his company going forward. I don't want you to talk about what you did for the last company because every time you refer to the last company or the last job or where you were three or four or five years ago, you're reminding this guy of the past. Whoa. He's only interested in what? If he's a decision maker like I am, I'm not interested in yesterday, last month, three months ago, bringing me to my future. My future as an executive, as an entrepreneur, has hope in it. You don't want to talk about three weeks ago, three months ago, three years ago. You want to talk about what can you do for me today? What can you do for this company? What do you, where do you see yourself fitting in? Where can you make the biggest bang? Where can you exchange with this individual in such a monster way that he's like, my God, man, who are you, dude? Who are you? Where have you been? Why haven't you come here sooner? I'm glad that other company let you go. Dude, let's put this guy on payroll right now. Get started. You see what I'm doing? You see the difference? Make a difference in how he views you and his company going forward. It's mental ownership. You got to get that guy to think about hiring you, where you're going to sit, what desk you're going to be at, how you're going to be effective, how you're going to communicate with him, how are you going to solve problems for him. That's what you need to go into this interview with, not the past. Go get it. Tip number 10, you're not going in to do an interview. You're going in to sell yourself. You're going in to present yourself as a valuable, extraordinary product that no matter what they offer you in money, you're worth a hundred times that. This is all about selling. Okay, you want a job, this is about selling yourself. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, when I go into an interview to get a job, I don't come out without a close. They'll either hire me on the spot or they'll regret not hiring me. You might not hire me, but I promise you, you will regret not hiring me and or you'll say, dude, who was that cat? Who was that guy that just came in here? You want to control that interview and make it a sales presentation. Tell them you're extraordinary. Tell them you're great. Tell them you can make a difference. Oversell yourself if you have to. Don't undersell yourself. Overcommit. Overcommit, overpromise, sell. If you don't know how to sell, get my book, Sell or Be Sold. The book is sick. Fundamentals of how to sell anything, yourself, a product, a brand, to market yourself, to, to correctly promote yourself. Because here's the truth. If you're worried about overselling yourself, the problem is you're not sold on you. So the first thing we have to do before you go to this interview where you're going to sell yourself is we're going to get you sold on you. What makes you different? What makes you unique? What makes you extraordinary? What makes you worth more than the highest amount of money they could ever offer you? This is an opportunity right now. You're out of work. This is an opportunity to get finally, to finally get the job you want to get. This is a fresh new start. You need to go in there and bang this thing, knock this thing out of the park by selling yourself, not just doing an interview. Good luck. Tip number 11, you need to understand that the most important thing to every company, every department is revenue. Look, if you can bring revenue into this interview, into this presentation, if you can bring the concept of you increasing revenue, making it easier to get revenue, somehow connecting this company because of your job, your position, what you're going to do and offer there, Somehow you're going to either assist in generating revenue or actually bring in new revenue. You got this job is locked. It's a done deal because nobody in interviews is talking about that. Jasper's helping me with this video today. He missed it in the interview. He missed the opportunity. Dude, I'm faster. I'm quicker. I'm more efficient. And I'm going to show you video. We're going to post video that's going to drive revenue to your site, Grant. That's going to make it easier for you to sell your products, your services, and to command a higher price. I am a revenue guy. So you do that in a presentation, they're going to be like, hang on a second. I got to bring so-and-so in here because nobody's doing this in the interview. You know what they're talking about? First of all, they're dependent on the resume. Number two, they're being interviewed. They're not selling. 
Okay, you're going to shift in. You're going to shift into, hey, I'm going to tell you why I'm going to be here. I'm going to tell you why I'm extraordinary. And you're going to bring in, you're going to bring in King R revenue. Okay, it is, it is the God of the marketplace today. Anytime you have monster co contractions like you have right now, every business owner is worried about one thing. Not, not their expenses first. That's not true. Little players are worried about expenses. The real players worry about one thing. Not how much they spend, how much can they make? How can they increase revenue? I'm not worried about how much money I spend. That's not what I think about every day. I think about how can I generate more revenue? Bring that into your interview. Bring that into your sales presentation. Bring in how whether you're a receptionist, an engineer, a mechanic, I don't care what the position is. You're sweeping floors in a school. Dude, how can you produce more revenue for that school or that company? Show them that, bam, you got a job. Tip 12 of how to get the job you want is this. Never, ever talk about how you've been let go wrongly. Don't talk about how somebody mistreated you. Do not be critical or negative about the last company you worked for. I don't care if you were in a sweatshop being paid two bucks an hour, having to work 22 hours a day, and they were completely breaking the law. Do not bring it up. When you start getting negative about the last place, the first thing this guy thinks is, oh my gosh, this is what's gonna happen with this person at my place. Literally, I have ended interviews in 40 seconds because, hey, tell me about your last job. I'm just fishing, just fishing for negative. I'm waiting to hear what they're gonna say about me when they leave me. Oh yeah, this guy, he was really unfair. Tell me about the worst boss you've ever had. You know the answer to that? Never had a bad boss, sir. Never had a bad boss, okay? Never had a bad boss. I don't have anybody to complain about, okay? I just don't see negative people. Are there some people that are harder to work for than others? Absolutely, but you know what I focus on? What can I bring to the table? And that's what I'm here to talk to you about today. What can I bring to your company? How can I make a difference for your company? What would I need to be extraordinary, unique, unbelievable here? Grant, I'm just looking for a receptionist. Great. Flip the table on him. Remember, we're not doing an interview. We're doing a sales presentation. Tell me about your best receptionist. Tell me about your worst one. What would I have to do to exceed the level of your best one by 50 times? I could get a job literally in 36 hours. All you got to do is get in front of the right company, the right people, and do the right presentation. You want to be that shining light when he leaves? That's the most positive person I ever met in my life. That's who you should be every day, particularly on this interview. You should be the beacon. You should be the model. You should be the billboard of positive. You should be... The guy walking around with like, with, with like with, on, his, on his cape, Mr. Positive, Mrs. Positive, okay? Mr. Attitude, Mrs. Attitude. God, I got to hire that guy. I felt better when I was around that person. See, that's what you're going to do in this interview. There's your 12 tips to getting a job. If you use these exactly the way, not just one of them, not just two of them, put them all together, package them, listen to this over and over again, decide that you're going to get that job, get in front of the decision maker, don't rely on the HR department, don't rely on a hiring party, okay? Don't rely on anyone, don't rely on your resume. Get in there, don't do an interview, do a sales presentation and do a great sales presentation. Don't talk about the past. Don't talk about how you've been wrong. Talk about what you can do. Be that beacon of positive. You put all that together and I guarantee you're gonna get a job, okay? Now, in addition to that, I want you to do one other thing. This is my 13th rule, the 13th commandment, and probably the most important of the bunch. I want you to literally select not an industry like construction or social media to go into. I want you to make a list of three to five companies, no more than five companies, three to five companies that you want to work for. I want you to literally target like you would a car or a vacation or a girl or a guy what you want. Don't keep it broad, okay? Don't keep it real broad. Keep it confined to three or four or five people. Three or four or five people at the most, 
companies you want to work for. You'd be excited. You can't wait to work for them. And then I want, to find, I want you to find out who runs those companies. And I want you to get in front of those three, four, or five companies, those individuals that can make a decision on you. Use the 12 tips I gave you, and I guarantee you, not only are you going to get a job, you're going to get the job you want. Work for the company you work for. You're going to make a commitment to them that you're going to be freaking extraordinary, unbelievable. You're saying no to unemployment. You're saying yes to a job. You're saying yes to working for yourself. You're going to be a beacon, an example of greatness. Look, you're not going to just change a company. You're not going to just change your life. You're going to literally be a great example for the entire U.S. economy and your community, your church, for your kids. Take my 13 tips, put them together, package them, make them part of you. Watch this again and again if you need to. Get back to work. Get the job you want. Get the money you deserve so you can take care of yourself, your church, your community, your family, and yourself. Thanks a lot. This is Grant Cardone. Hey, and be sure you follow me at Cardone Success on Facebook and at Twitter at Grant Cardone.